Good afternoon from a very cold and rainy Epcot parking lot. We were just getting all bundled up out here, getting ready to head into the park. Hopefully it won't be busy because of the rain. We'll see what happens. We are excited to try some of the food that we didn't get to try the last time that we were here for Festival of the Arts. I'm gonna link the video down below from our first visit from Festival of the Arts. We got through a few booths. Mm -hmm. We got through some of our most anticipated food items, but we have a few more today. But yeah, like Tim said, we want to try some of the stuff we missed last time. And we showed off some of the art. We talked about what the festival is all about. Yeah. So let's do it. Let's head inside. I'm very excited. Me too. I'm also very cold. I did not see this figment the last time that we were here. His horns kind of look like he has like a hair cloth, don't they? Like I got confused. I was like, what is that on top of his head? So here's my question for you. So Pluto is out here as well as Goofy. But why is Pluto the only one with a Festival of the Arts? Hello! Oh, thank you. He's the only one wearing a Festival of the Arts outfit. Like, his collar is specific to Festival of the Arts. But Goofy's just wearing his regular Goofy clothes. Hmm. Once again, they are doing the expression section where you can do a paint-by-number mural with all of the other Epcot guests. And this is kind of over between Finding Nemo and, like, the land. The land is right there. Finding Nemo is over there. And here's something that's interesting is to get your paint, you go to that tent right across the way that the monorail is passing right over top of monorail. And you pick up some paint and you get in line over here and you paint. All right, so they sent us down to space number eight. We have to paint eight squares each. Okay, I'm gonna do eight, which is green. Like a neon green. And I've got number 10, which is kind of like this yellowy color. Oh yeah, you got a lot up there. Okay, so I'll do these two. Okay. Ooh, an artist. Oh, no. <laughs> All right. Looking good. Beautiful. All right, so I got number 10. So this way you guys will be able to see it up close. So I'm going to do these three. Beautiful. Okay. Okay. And when it's all done, or when you're all done painting, they give you this little, almost like a bookmark. But this shows what the finished mural will look like. Ooh, I feel like you want to get the, the one with the traditional colors. That's nice. It's right there in the center. You can see it. There's people kind of crowding around it right now. And now we are headed off to our first booth, which is one of the ones that we couldn't go to opening day because that's where they were selling the Figment popcorn buckets. And the Figment popcorn buckets are officially sold out. So now we can get some food from Pop Eats. I was also looking for the... Remember when they had the photo ops where they, it was like, it looked like butterflies? Yeah. And you would stand. It was like a you were part of the art type photo op yeah. in, the, in the construction malls. They don't have them like this here. No, they just have some art from, uh, I think Imagineers over there. Okay. All right, so here we are at Pop Eats. Ooh, got some tomato soup with grilled cheese, but one of them is bacon, apple, and brie grilled, tree, grilled cheese. That sounds really good. And I also wanted to show that the Figment Premium Popcorn Bucket is currently unavailable. Ooh, so I think we're definitely gonna get the tomato soup with bacon, apple, and brie grilled cheese but I kind of want to get this pop tart as well. It's available every year, as well as the almond frangipan cake, but I feel like it's been a while since I've had that pop tart. So something that I want to do today specifically is I want to show you the promo picture of what it's supposed to look like and then what ours actually looks like because this festival relies heavily on the beauty, like the beauty of the food. It all kind of, all the food looks like art. So I want to see what you're supposed to get versus what you get. So this is the tomato soup, which does come in this pop can from Pop Eats. And then the grilled cheese is the brie bacon and apple grilled cheese. Looks pretty nice. Yeah, it looks really good. And this was $6.25. And then we got the pop tart. It didn't say what was inside. It is hazelnut filling. Oh, is it? Yeah. This one was $4.50. They call this a modern take on a sugar cookie. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. Rather than an actual like pop tart, it's not like a popped pastry. Okay. So compared to the picture, what do you think? I mean, I think it looks pretty close. It's pretty nice. Very buttery. Oh, that's good. It's got a whole bunch of butter on my lips. Mmm, nice. Mmm. Does it taste nice? Yeah, I'm a big fan of like a little bit of sweet and a little bit of salty. Should I dip it in the soup? Yeah, dip it. Give it a little dip dip. Let's see. Ooh. Is that good? That makes it even better. Oh, nice. Wow. 
Okay, maybe I'll dip it once. You should. Just try it. At home when I make my grilled cheeses, I always dip my grilled cheese in ketchup. Oh yeah. So this is like an elevated take of that. Okay. <laughs> more, more adult version. Oh, that's really nice. Now dip it and see what you think. I like that they use green apples. Yeah. I didn't expect that. <laughs> a little bit of a little bit of a punch in there. I think I prefer it without. Really? Yeah. Oh man, I, li I really liked the sweet and salty and then like the acidity from the tomato. Let me try again. It was just like a very well balanced. I think I prefer it without. Huh. Yeah. Well, there you go. Everybody has really their good. preferences. It's so good. I'm going to make it like that at home from now on. Okay. And I like that it was chunks of apple and not sliced apple. Yeah, that's nice. Because it's like sometimes when you do slices, you'll pull out an entire slice in one bite, you know? So this is so you get the apple in every bite. Yeah. Smart, smart thinking. That is smart. Yeah. Mm. Delicious. Got a, you guys got a little tomato. We're saving it for later. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I wanted to mention. So the last time that we had this last year or the year before, they ran out of these every time that we came. So this is the first time I'm actually no. No, they were limiting them. It was they were only giving them out to the first 100 people. Oh, so today we got lucky and we actually got one. But I thought for sure it would actually be metal, and Tim said it's plastic. Yeah, the whole thing's plastic, so, even the lid and everything. Yeah, it still looks really cool though. Yeah. So I. I do like this. And the picture that they show on the board, it's in just a bowl. So I do think that my presentation was better than the picture because we got it in the can. Yeah. So there you go. Disney, you're one for one right now. And then for our pop tart, I feel like this looks pretty similar to the to the photo. It's a little little wet from the rain. But I think that'll be okay. <laughs> oh yeah. Hmm. How's the like pastry ratio to Hazelnut. I feel like it's pretty good right now, but I think it'll get even better once I get towards the center. Oh, yeah. Huh, I like it. It's got very sweet. Lots, yeah. lots of sugar. I will say, looking over a deconstructed dish and here at Pop Eats, there are no lines except for at Starbucks. People are trying to warm up with some nice coffees. All right, so we are going over to the refreshment port, which we just came from Pop Eats right over there. And the reason we're coming here, this isn't a typical Festival of the Arts booth. This is a permanent location, but they have Noki Poutine. Yes, and that's what I want. But the last time we came, I heard mixed reviews. I heard it's really good or okay. it wasn't great. So we'll see. So this is also a full-size portion, so it's a little bit more expensive. It is $9, but it is Noki Poutine with red wine, braised beef, cheese curds, basil, and burrata. It looks really nice. Yes. And the, so the gnocchi looks fried. Yeah, it looks like fried gnocchi. Yeah, so I think it's gonna be probably really nice and crunchy on the outside and really pillowy on the inside. Like tater tots. Yeah, if we're lucky. We'll see how, <laughs> we'll see. Get a little cheese, I'll get a little bit of everything. Okay. Not a definitive wowing. Something was cold. I think it was the burrata. Is the burrata cold? Okay. The burrata's really cold. Okay, that's strange. So it's kind of weird. It has a really great flavor. The flavor is super nice. But when you, when the burrata is the first thing that touches your tongue, it's like, oh, I'm eating ice cold. cream. <laughs> yeah, it's really cold. Taste it. Okay. But the flavor is really nice. And the gnocchi is cooked like exactly how I said. Oh, pillowy? Yeah, but it's like, here, let me, let me just get just a gnocchi. It is like a tater tot. Yeah. I don't like that. I like it. Because hmm. as everybody knows, gnocchi is potato. It's true. I think I got, except for the cheese curd. Oh, two kinds of cheese in the cheese like thing. I like that. <laughs> the burrata is very strange. Like it tastes good, but it is, it's weird that it's cold. It's like really cold though. Yeah. Okay, I just want to try some of this braised beef. Wine braised beef and uh, gnocchi. Everything has a really delicious flavor, but I will say the gnocchi is not as crispy as I thought it would be based on the look of it. Okay. Like I thought it was going to be like crunchy. No, it's just kind of like chewy on the outside and then pillowy on the inside. Okay. That's good. Like, I like this a lot. I I'm like going to try this just cheese curd right here. Just the curd? Did you get the squeak? Che yeah, but cheese curds are also cold. Oh, okay. Which I don't think they should be. No? No, I think they should warm up. They should be like kind of melty, right? I, I want some Canadians to chime in and let us know because right. we don't we don't know. Hmm. Yeah, this is good. I would eat this again. I would I would totally order this again. Oh, you know what it is? The gravy is supposed to melt the cheese curds. Oh. So in this case, the braised beef is supposed to melt the cheese curds. Okay. It's, yeah, not, it's not quite hot enough. So the last time that we came, we went in this direction. We didn't make it too much further than we are now. 
the last food item that we tried, I think was over there, where was it? In between Morocco and France. That was the Encanto booth. But right now, I think what we're gonna do is we are gonna head in this direction. Get some more food items. I did want to point out this is the scavenger hunt for this festival. It's called Disney's Figments Brush with the Masters. It's a really interesting one because what you have to do is you have to find classic pieces of art that they have taken an element out of and replace that element with figment. If we see one, I will try to show it to you, but they are definitely harder to find. I was just talking to nobody. I thought you were behind me. Oh. <laughs> and you were not. Sorry. I, saying, I like this picture of, of Mickey on the... The fire engine? Yeah. By Tim Rogerson. Yeah, it's cool. So this one is signed and numbered. $600. Same thing with this one in the candy store. Signed and numbered. $600. Uh -huh. Here's another interesting aspect. Disney Traders, which is a gift shop right here at the entrance to World Showcase, has Acme Archives artist appearance daily so you can see some of the artists that make marvel prints i don't know if these are specifically from marvel or if they're just artists that do marvel paintings all right up next craftsman courtyard pate de champagne okay that sounds interesting pate with pistachios cast iron roasted prince edward island mussels cast iron seared steelhead trout Okay, I think we have to get the pâté though, right? Because it's weird. So this is the pâté de champagne, country pork pâté with pistachios, truffles, toasted ciabatta, red onion marmalade, pickled mustard seed, and caper berries for $6.75. I didn't know that that's what pâté looked like. I, I feel like this is a different kind of pâté. It's got chunks of mushrooms and stuff in there. There's also pistachios in there. Truffles, yeah, it's got truffles in there. Wow, we just need to get into it. I'm trying to like dissect this thing. Okay, so I met somebody who was also eating this and they said to get a little onion, a little pate, a little toast. Should you take some of those mustard seeds off? I don't know. Okay. And a little bit of the green stuff. Kind of nice. Okay, good. I mean, it's very flavorful and it's different, you know, and it's mm -hmm. cold. It is a cold dish. I don't know what those are. I'm not sure if I'm supposed to eat that or not. I imagine I'm supposed to eat it if it's on the plate. Yeah. Take one more bite. Would you order it again? I might. Okay. It's got kind of like a tangy sweet flavor. Ooh, the onions are, are pretty sweet. The mustard seeds are delicious. The pate, I'm going to taste the pate by itself. If texture bothers you, I might not order this because it is kind of like chunky. And then I I think it looked exactly like the photo. Yeah. So they did a really good job of, of really making it beautiful. It is definitely, I think, an acquired taste. It's not something that I think everybody would enjoy. But if you are adventurous or if you think that, or if you just like pate in general, I would try this. Yeah. Yeah, it was definitely a fun one to try. I don't know. I agree. It's exciting. Up next, El Artista Hambrento, carne asada and taco de chocolate. Ooh. This is the carne asada, seared beef tenderloin, grilled queso fresco, refried beans, scallion, and ranchera salsa. And this is $9.50. I don't necessarily think this is worth the price just based off of the portion size. Yeah. Not that anything is here, but um, it does look like it's cooked really well. Looks and I'm nice. excited for the grilled queso fresca. All right, let's try I want to get a little bit of everything. So I got a little cheese, a little meat, a little beans, and a little sauce. The cheese and the ranchero sauce together is really nice on the steak. Okay. Yeah, I like that. What about the steak? Was the steak really nice? Oh yeah, the steak The steak was really nice. Sorry, I was like, I probably don't need to tell them the steak's nice. It was. Yeah, I was very surprised, like pleasantly surprised how well it looks like it's been cooked. This is good. Like it looks like they got the temperature absolutely correct. Yeah, it's very tender. Super tender. I feel like I didn't get a lot of flavor from the, from the cheese. Oh no? No, let me try again. Oh, there it is. Okay. You know, it kind of tastes like a deconstructed taco, like a steak taco. Yeah, it's pretty good. I don't know that I would get it again just based off of price. Yeah, I don't think I would. Yeah, but it was, it did taste very good. So if like, if price is no, you know, what? Well, the beans are pretty good. Yeah, I like the beans. Yeah, that was surprising. That was like the best part of the dish for me. <laughs> no, the steak was really good. This is the Taco de Chocolate, chocolate candy shell filled with Mexican chocolate mousse 
and a touch of chili topped with seasonal fruit. And this was $6.50. Oh, is it a messy one? Okay. I think it's a messy <laughs> one. <laughs> Do you taste the spice? I was a little nervous about the chili. No, I can't. Okay. Well, okay. So for us Floridians, this is very cold. Um, my nose has like a tingling to it right now, and I think that's just because it's cold. But like, I kind of, you know how sometimes when you eat something spicy, you get like a... Oh, yeah, yeah. I sort of have that, but I don't know if that's just because it's just spicy. I'll have to try it. Or do I don't know if it's just because it's cold. But yeah, picking it up definitely made it fall all apart. <laughs> Sorry, that was my... I said, you should probably just pick it up. That'll be easier. <laughs> so maybe don't listen to me in the future. Well, it was okay. I'm gonna try the you try some of the seasonal fruit. Which one did you try, the yellow one or the green one? Honeydew melon. The green one? Mm -hmm. Mango and honeydew. Okay. Yeah. Now try a little bit of that chocolate. I feel like I'm getting the tiniest bit of spice right now. And then I think this is strawberry. Oh, underneath? Yeah. Okay. No, I can definitely get the spice now. Oh, can you? Yeah, it's not very spicy at all. But it's like, you know how like uh, cinnamon is spicy? Like you can get like a red hot thing. I'm getting like this teeniest, tiniest aftertaste of that. Yeah, it's really nice, isn't it? So good. Like the, the, the hard chocolate shell is just like regular milk chocolate, I think. The mousse is really nice. Actually, it's a little bit darker than milk chocolate, so it is a little bit almost on the dark side. Mm. The they mousse is really it was nice. Mexican chocolate, so I don't know if that's like a different flavor. It, oh. it definitely tastes more decadent to me. Yeah, it's very nice. I would order this one again. No. That's really good. And on to the next booth. We're headed past Mexico, headed over towards Norway. Take a little little pit stop over at the bathrooms in Norway. Next booth is the Painted Panda out here in front of the China Pavilion. And I think we're gonna get, we've had these before, the Shumai and the Char Su, and they were good. So this is General So's Chicken Shumai for $10.75. So I have to admit, these portions are, are uh, a little bit minuscule. For the price, so I think the last time we tried the Shumai, we said like, whoa, this is so expensive for what they are. But the flavor was really nice. It is a general size chicken, so it is a little bit spicy. But I do like the flavor. I wish it came with more sauce. I think we were discussing that last year this might have been beef instead okay. of chicken, but the price stayed the same. Mm -hmm. I do like it, but I don't think I would get it again. Right. And it does look identical to the picture. I think we said that last year. We liked it, but we wouldn't get it again. Then we and got then it we again. Got it again. <laughs> This is the char siu pork bun, and it was $8.50. What's the red sauce? Is that like sweet and sour sauce? So yeah, so this is sweet and sour. There's sweet and sour on it, but it has like a... It looks so good. The, the pork looks really nice. Hmm. Yeah, like a nice smoked pork. I would probably do that. Would you get it again? Yeah. <laughs> I will say that we stopped off here at Lotus Blossom Cafe. What happened? <laughs> somebody, somebody left a comment and they said, they say, and I will say a lot. And I was like, do we? I do. I, I like, we do. Yeah. I just stopped myself like three times in this video from saying it. Oh. I just didn't know. Well, I will say <laughs> that we, uh, we went to the Lotus, Lotus Blossom Cafe to get some chairs. Lots of nice little secluded chairs back here and like dry spots. Now, on a normal day, I feel like there would be people from Lotus Blossom Cafe taking up these chairs. Oh, yeah, yeah. But, like, today, there's nobody here, so I feel okay eating there. I also wanted to mention that the the China Pavilion has a lot of great, like, tucked away seating areas that were really great. When I was still nursing Jackson, this was a great place to come and nurse. Yeah. So if you're still breastfeeding and you're looking for a place to do that in Epcot, I highly recommend the China Pavilion. There's lots of great places that are just kind of hidden. Yeah. I did want to mention though that I'm really sad that they're not doing anything for Lunar New Year. Yeah, it's kind of strange, right? Like why, why, how come only Disneyland gets it? We have this entire pavilion. They could be doing something really cool. Yeah. What the heck? They're out setting up for Harmonious. This is the fireworks boat. It's kind of early for them to be setting up. I wonder what time Harmonious is tonight. All right, now we are on our way a little bit deeper into Epcot, coming around to Belgium and Italy, I think. So let me see, because I wrote down a bunch of things that okay. I wanted to do. We're, we're getting a lot of them done today, too. I'm I very know. proud of us. So Yeah, it's definitely way less crowded than it was on opening day, for sure. Look, look at all this room for activities right here. Oh, by the way, a good spot if it's raining to come and pick up a table with a little umbrella over top of it. We still need to go to, to America for the artist table. Okay. France, Italy, 
the pastoral palette in the Tangerine Cafe in Morocco. Okay. So we have a, we have a few more things. All right, over here near Germany, we've got the pastoral palette. Oh, this was so it was oh, wild the, boar. The beef short rib. Okay, we'll give it a try. Should we try it? Oh, the short rib looks nice too, and the opera cake looks good as well. Ooh, are we doing it? I'm not going to do the opera cake. I think I just want to try because we have a lot of things. This is the only okay. thing I wrote on my list. All right, let's do it. So this is the wild boar cassoulet with duck confit, ham hock, and wild boar sausage. And this was $9. I did also want to mention that the pastoral palette is hearty dishes inspired by timeless Bavarian folk art. I think it'll be delicious. It looks very similar to the photo. I just want to try this green. I just want to see what the green is. What's the green? I don't know. Green. It tastes, it has a very green flavor. It tastes okay. very herby. What a... Maybe it's like a pesto. I'm gonna try on these like beans. Is the boar the sausage on top? Boar's the sausage on top. There's okay. ham hock down here. Okay. Um, So those taste very much like a, like a, not split pea soup, but if you took split pea soup and replaced it with beans, the peas with beans. Like it has a smoky flavor? Like there's a very hammy, beany flavor to it. Okay. All right, let's try one of these guys. This is the wild boar sausage. Give me, give me like a closer look at the. Yeah. Okay. I see a lot of fennel in there. Almost tastes like an Italian sausage, but because it's wild boar, it's got like a grainy texture to it. Almost gamey, but not quite gamey. I mean, this is a good dish. It's very hearty, and it's very like, you feel like you're like, oh, I'm gonna go out into the cold wilderness. This is totally perfect for a day like today. If you're here on a warm day, I might skip it because yeah. it is, I think it would just be too heavy for a, a hot day. I love that. And the ham that's in there, it's not like chunks of ham. It's like almost like shredded ham. This is really good. When you get the green stuff like mixed in with everything, it just really kind of like brightens up the dish. So it's like a super heavy, a very rich dish. When you add the green stuff in with it, it just kind of like tones it down a little bit. I don't know, I really like this. Would you say, try the green stuff, it's delicious? <laughs> I would. I would say that. Yeah? Yeah. Okay, so I got the rosé blonde ale from the Pastoral Palette booth. And um, I really like it. It has like a, it's a very light beer, but it has a sweet kind of aftertaste to it. So it really does taste like if you had mixed a light beer and a rosé wine together. Kind of nice. Okay. Yeah, it's not super like heavily carbonated, so it's just like easy to drink. I like it. Okay. I would I would order a whole glass of this, but I'm glad I didn't because there was another drink I wanted to try and I didn't want to have like full cups of everything, you know? Mm -hmm. But I'm glad I tried it. They also had a flight that was called a Play on Rosé flight. So it had the Frosé, the Rosé hard cider, and then the Rosé beer. Oh. Very interesting. They came into a booth by an artist named yeah. Rob Kaz. And look, Mickey and Minnie are wearing ponchos, dancing in the rain. This is like us today. Oh yeah. Except for wrong park. And we haven't danced yet, we'll have to do that. <laughs> and then Figment flying over top of Spaceship this Earth, watching the fireworks. Park. And we are passing the Italy booth here. I don't know if I want anything from here. Flavorful Baroque cuisine though. Ooh, that's exciting. So all around Epcot they have these kind of like chalk drawings of different characters. And this one's in the Italy pavilion right next to the gelato area of Luca and Alberto. But one thing that's interesting is that they used to have Machiavelli over here and he has since been moved. I don't know what happened. So speaking of the gelato place, the gelateria behind me has the most delicious pistachio gelato. I highly recommend giving it a try if you like pistachio. It is delicious. If it wasn't so cold today, I would get some. But we will put a link to a video in the description down below where we did try it. So we're headed over to the artist table booth here in the America Pavilion. And inside of the American Adventure, they do have an exhibit on the soul of jazz and American Adventure. <laughs> We've done a full tour of this and we'll put a link to that video in the description down below. It's really, really cool. There's a lot of interesting stuff in there. Yeah, it was. It's not a huge exhibit, but it's definitely one that you should check out. Over here at artist table, Delicious fare brushed with flavor. Ooh, maybe I'll get the pistachio cake too. That sounds interesting. I think we're gonna get the pan seared scallops and the beef wellington for sure. This is the beef wellington mushroom duxelle prosciutto and puff pastry with red wine demi glaze and baby vegetables. This is $8.50. That is ridiculously good. Is it? Holy cow. What's so good about it? So, the mushroom 
the puff pastry, the steak, everything about it. The steak was, I did get like a gristle in my oh, steak. did you? Yeah. It's like, you know that bite when you like bite into a piece of gristle? Yeah. I got a little bit of that, but okay. the flavor, man, the flavor is really there. I always want to try to make beef wellington, but it sounds so hard to make. You got to try this. It's really good. Oh, okay. tad bit salty. I like salt though. Let's see. Oh yeah, you're going to love this. The puff pastry. Yeah. Buttery. Good wow, stuff. that makes the dish, and it is way too salty. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you're. I agree with you. It's you love salt, salty. and you're like, oh. That's way too salty. <laughs> if it was a little less salty, that would be the perfect dish. Yeah. It also did have a pretty big hunk of fat in the middle. Oh yeah. But I, even with that, even with that, the flavor was just really, really nice. Imagine that with like a super nice piece of steak. Mm. Let's try to make it. No. <laughs> <laughs> this is the pan seared scallops with vanilla butternut squash puree brown butter cauliflower puree and lime foam for seven dollars all right so you're getting into the i'm gonna move this i don't know what this is but mm. i'm gonna move it what is the powder they didn't say what the powder was give the powder a little taste it's sweet whenever they handed it out the powder flew away oh. like snow it's a what did they say that the butternut was the butternut squash was mixed with hazelnut i think so it's that. Oh, these scallops are cooked perfectly. Oh, I didn't. I wouldn't even look to see you cook. They were it. so. Whoa! Tender. Look at that. That was a big bite of scallop. Mm. Is that good? This is like our favorite boost so far. That was cooked so nice. The purees underneath are cold. I didn't think they were gonna be cold. So a couple of things I want to mention. I tasted this the black thing. It's just burnt toast. Burnt toast. It's literally just like burnt bread. All so right. So it doesn't taste great. And then um, whatever this is. I think it's regular butternut squash. Okay, yeah. Like ch but it's not cooked, it's completely raw. Oh, wow. So I don't like that. That doesn't seem correct. I just like the purees and the scallops and none of the other stuff. What about the lime? Oh, the lime foam was really nice. Yeah, it just really like brightened everything up. Okay. So, yeah, all right. You know what it's time to try now? The pistachio cake. Oh, yeah. I also decided to get the pistachio cake and this comes with cherry mousse and morello cherries. And it was $4.75. So the one thing that I remember about this from last year is that I really liked the chocolate covered cherries. Okay. And I love the pistachio cake. I'm a huge fan of pistachio. I had pistachios for lunch today. You did. Yeah. I think I like them better when they're like in a sweet thing. Okay. You know, should I try one? Yeah. Are you okay if I try it first? Yeah. What is this? Pistachio like a, crumble? It's like a crumble. Ooh, it's so nice. Okay. I like how you got angry about it for a second. You're like, ooh. <laughs> Okay, I'm gonna try this one now. So it has like a pistachio gel inside. Okay. And it's just so good. I like that. Yeah. I'm gonna try the pistachio crumble with the pistachio cake. Yeah. Phenomenal. Show stopping. Never been done. It was done last year. <laughs> Okay, let's try this. The cherry still has a stem on it though, doesn't it? Oh no, does Oh no, it? that was a piece of chocolate. It was like a little chocolate stem. I just, I ruined it. Okay, I don't know what the, what the other, what the other. Uh, it's just cherries. This is cherries? Yeah. Okay. Real thin layer of chocolate, dark chocolate. Mmm. Oh yeah. Oh, that's nice. I don't remember what that was. Uh oh. That's just like a piece of cherry, like cherry, like a mousse. Everything from this booth. Mm. Good, right? It is actually really good. I feel like eating it is like when you do field day and you have the egg. You're not trying to drop the egg. Oh, yeah. That's what it felt like. Try that with this next triangle thing. That's really like that. Because it's like a jelly. I think I would just you do can't. that. Oh, you can. I couldn't. <laughs> that was very tart. Yeah. Cherries. <laughs> My favorite part is the pistachio. Yeah. It's so nice. Yum. All right, looking across the way at Spaceship Earth, looks like the beacons of magic have started. We'll have to make our way back up there because there is a new one based off of the rainbow connection from the Muppets. But we're headed through Japan right now. And I think we need to go to Tangerine <laughs> Cafe in France. And I think we'll have eaten a lot of the stuff off of our list. All right, we made it into the Morocco Pavilion where Tangerine Cafe is. And this used to be an actual quick service restaurant, but now it seems to just hold different food items for the festivals. Okay, we've got some kebabs in here. Lamb and chicken. 
stone baked bread, crispy phyllo pockets, crispy phyllo pockets, and carrots three ways. Everybody said to get the carrots three ways, so we're gonna do it. And it looks nice. Okay, so this was $4.25. Definitely does not look like it was worth the price. What are the three different ways? It's the Berber Spice Grilled Carrot, Pickled Carrot, and then a Ginger Pureed Carrot. Okay. Interesting. So I know that you can get a whole pound of carrots for like $1.50. <laughs> People were saying this was the best thing in the... In the... Well, no, they... A lot of our like vegan friends said this is really oh, good. Okay. So the bear bear spiced grilled carrots are spicy. Okay. Kind of tastes like licorice. That's weird. Not my favorite. Okay, I'm gonna try one of the pickled carrots. They're like pickled carrot ribbons. That was nice. I like I like pickled vegetables. Very tangy. Oh, the puree, the ginger puree was really nice. So I like the pickled carrots and I like the puree carrots. But I just don't think that justifies I feel like I'm being attacked. the price. How much was it? It was $4.25? $4.25. I don't know. I know there are not a lot of vegetarian and vegan options at this festival though. So if you're looking for vegetarian and vegan options, I would try it because I think it's one of the only things you can get. But I feel I like I saw somewhere that there were only three options for vegan yeah, and vegetarian. Which is, it's pretty wild. I know that this festival doesn't have very many food options just in general. But they should have more than that. I'm not a fan of this one. Yeah, I think this is my least favorite thing so far. I would pass on that one. Yeah. <laughs> but again, if you're vegan or vegetarian, give it a try. Right. All right, we are headed towards the France booth. This is the one that had a super long line when we came on opening day. And now we're going to check it out again. Ooh, what are we going to try? Brie bread? Truffle croissant? I don't know. This sounds brioche. Okay. All of these sound too hard for me to pronounce, but... I think I'm gonna get that molten chocolate hazelnut cake. Sounds really good. So all of these names are in French, so I'm not gonna try to say them in French. I'm just gonna say what they are. So this is the chilled lobster bisque mousse served with dill brioche. Sounds... Do you, do you just eat the mousse? I think you do both. Like maybe you put a little bit on your brioche. Okay. Give it a try. This is a molten chocolate and hazelnut cake with pure origin Valhorona chocolates and then this is warm creamy brie in a house made bread bowl oh, look at that wow okay it's very creamy <laughs> all right your turn you got to try this 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 lobster here okay so i will say that this did not look like the picture in the picture it was like little little ones like three little versions of this okay but they gave us one big one so let's see and what's try. the I read an article that called this elevated cat food, which is why I wanted to try it. So there's kind of what it looks like inside. Is it terrible? This is not good. Oh no. I got the, the brie in case this wasn't good. This is not good. Will you try the little dill brioche? Mm -hmm. Should you try it on? Just pick it up and eat it, I think. Oh, do you? Should you try it on the bread? Yeah, that does not look this good at really all. This is really crunchy, like... Okay. Let me see. Let me do it like this. It's so gross. I'm sorry. I don't think the bread makes it any better. Okay, you can try some of this brie. Maybe this can, um... Get the flavor of weird, weird lobster out of your mouth? I really wanted to like it. Alright, let's dip it in. Look at that. Look at that dip. That looks nice. Oh man. Does that make up for the lobster? It is pretty good. Okay. It's nice and warm. I think that's the best part is that it's warm. <laughs> if you like brie, you'll like this. Oh yeah, movie work? Look at that. That's nice. Yeah. Let's give it a try. Delicious. <laughs> that is awesome. Yeah. That's a solid chocolate molten lava cake. It looks so good. Mm. Okay, feel pretty good. I wasn't gonna stop here. Very delicious. Are you glad you did? Yeah. It's a little bit like flowery though. You know what I mean? Like the the actual cake itself is not super sweet. The the filling is. Oh, okay. But the actual cake isn't. Mm. So I think that we've made it through all of the booths 
that we're gonna go to tonight. And so uh, now we're headed up to the front to try to watch some of the shows on Spaceship Earth. I don't know how much of that we'll be able to show you guys because of the copywritten music, but we'll show you at least a little bit. For real though, if you guys come to Epcot, be sure and watch the Beacon of Magic from here. It's awesome. Look at that. Monero with its sweet ground effects. Why are there so many songs about rainbows? And what's on the other side? What's so amazing that keeps us stargazing? And what do we think we might see? Have you been half asleep? And have you heard voices? I've heard them calling my name. Someday we'll find it, the rainbow connection, the lovers, the dreamers, and me. All right, so that was our trip out to Epcot to go to the International Festival of the Arts. We got a lot of food today. So we, I had a list in the first video that we did. I think we told you we had like 26 or 27 items. We finished our list. We did it. We had every item. Yeah. Fantastic. I really enjoyed most of the stuff that we had. I will say that there were definitely some hits and definitely some misses, but I'm really happy that we tried everything. And although we didn't get to show you every picture of every item, like the promo picture, I will say that pretty much everything looked identical to the promo picture. Right. So Disney is really knocking it out of the park as far as how beautiful the food is for this festival. Yeah. They did a really, really great job. Also, America Pavilion. Awesome. The artist table mm -hmm. was the best food that we had of the night. It was really great. I also really enjoyed the food from the Mexican Pavilion. Oh, yeah. I can't remember what the name, I think it was the Hungry Artist. Everything there was that we had was really delicious as well. Yeah. And I think we had a really fun, like, Disney date night. I think so. Yeah, the rain did not put a damper on our night. No, the rain only bothered me sometimes. <laughs> it, honestly, the crowd levels were so low, this was a great time to come. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, all in all, a fantastic night. And with that being said, we are off. We'll see you all tomorrow. Hi, we're here, we're here celebrating, celebrating Natalia's birthday, 21st. <laughs> now it's time, time to, to pay, pay the, the price. price. <laughs>